Welcome back to a special NCAA tournament edition of the Greg Campy Show. Here is Coach Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you with us. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. And Camp, the job is done. The Golden Grizzlies are in the NCAA tournament. The Kentucky Wildcats next up Thursday, 7, 10 p.m. on CBS National. How you doing, Camp? I'm good. And I, I obviously we did something good because all year I come into this show and the first thing they do is hand me a bill. Today they handed me free fries. So <laughs> hey, we must have done something really well. Things change quickly, don't they? Yeah, when he's good. <laughs> no, absolutely. But uh, yeah, and certainly we'll get into the uh, to the Kentucky Wildcats matchup coming up in just a little bit in the show. And by the way, if you want to get involved, send a tweet, hashtag ask campy. Uh, we'll answer all the questions uh, that we have time to get to. A lot of them are flying in here tonight, so we will certainly get to those. Golden Grizzlies Director of Athletics, Steve Waterfield, will join us coming up in just a little bit. We'll talk about the process uh, of the NCAA tournament, what's been going on and all that stuff. But, Kemp, before we get into all that, let's go back to Tuesday night in Indianapolis. Describe it from your chair. Well, I think that, you know, what – was most evident in this tournament was the last three minutes in both games on Monday night and the back again on Tuesday night. I, I thought we dominated the last three minutes, you know, and, and to win a championship, uh, that's what you have to do. You have to be the best that you, you know, the best team in the final most important plays players make plays. And, and uh, when you get into that time, it's not about coaching. It's not about adjustments. It's not about anything. It's about your good players having a confidence in themselves, having a confidence in their teammates to go out there and make plays with all the pressure in the world and everything on the line, national TV on ESPN and Trey Thompson showed the world, you know, what, what he is. And, and the other side of that is, you know, Lamp and, and Golke both were unbelievable. DQ had a tremendous tournament, but it was, it wasn't just, you know, one guy, you know, he, he put the Batman cape on that night. He, he did some things, but it was the whole, you know, the whole year has been about how good of a team we have. Um, I don't pay that much attention to a lot of these things during the course of a season, but I've had no, numerous national media media people talk to me about our team in the last few days, and they all state, well, you guys, you don't do anything good. Your stats don't show, you know, like you're not the best in this, you're not the best, you're just kind of in the middle of everything. And, uh, you know, I, I, again, I don't pay attention to that stuff, but it shows you that, you know, we've got 10, 11 really good players. They play for each other, um, and they make plays when it counts. If we, there's very few close games we've lost this year. If it was close, we won them, and, and that's how you have a special season. Camp, when you look at it, too, like this team coming down the stretch of games, and, and you made mention of it, every single close game always seemed to went your way all season long. Was that something that as the season went on, did that give you a lot of confidence in March? Because I know the team had the confidence. When you talk to Jack and Blake and Trey and all those guys, Nothing ever deterred them. When we, coming down the stretch of these games, they never displayed it, that fear, nerves, any of that stuff. It was very businesslike. Yeah, when we've gotten beat this year, the only game that I go back to is the Northern Kentucky game at Northern Kentucky. We made a couple of really bad plays down the stretch. And, you know, but again, that might have been what also helped us to learn from that. But every other game that we lost, you know, it was basically the other team played great. I mean, everybody remembers that Fort Wayne game here. Everybody remembers the right state game here and how, you know, that was unbelievable basketball those teams played against us. And what they're so good at, when I say they, I mean our players, is one mistake never became two. Two never became three. And I've, I've said that a lot this year because it's true. The snowball effect never happened. And, you know, you, you can watch any great team in this tournament and there's always going to be a bad day and then they come back from it or they're going to make a bad play and they come back from it. They don't let bad plays affect the next play. And, and that's what we did. We always believed we were going to win and 
And when you win that many close games, you know, it, it's more the mental side of it than, you know, the smart take from the strong. We talk about that all the time, the smart take from the strong. We're going to need on Thursday. And and if, with that type of belief and believing in each other and believing more, more importantly, believing in themselves, knowing, I mean, how many games did we win because we made free throws? You know, I mean, just, and you, yeah. and you watch, just watch, you know, we talk, we talk all the time that have happened to us in the tournament over the last decade and you just see that you know that brain freeze that you know you just look around at, at tournament games it was easy for us this year because we won and we're looking at everybody but the amount of just unbelievably i can't believe that just happened in the tournament we saw that all day saturday we saw it all day friday we saw a guy think he's behind and foul but right. you know that the, they're they're up one point with four seconds to go and he thinks he's behind and he fouls um, you know, I mean, just the crazy things that happened in this tournament and they didn't happen to us because of the mental toughness of our players. Hey, Kent, too, when, when you look at the tournament run, because I've, I've talked about this before, if you show me a tournament champion, I'll show you a moment. There were many moments of doubt. Things were in doubt a lot. And, and with this team camp, especially in that last five minute stretch, I mean, I guess the game against Cleveland State at the start. But, you know, you can start like that. And you can still recover. You can't finish like that. And recover no. and, and coming down the stretch camp i mean for the most part these games were closed out yeah and they were closed out the proper way you know they did we make a mistake sure you know but everybody's going to make a mistake but, but when we made one we we shrugged, shrugged it off okay i'm not going to do that again you know and and we made free throws and, you know things we we can look at things that went against us i mean we're up 73 70 with a minute five or something to go in the game in the championship game and and their great player shoots a three from the corner that hits the, I mean, it, it hits the back of the rim, goes up in the air, hits the backboard and still goes in. And you could sit there and say, oh, no, it's going to happen again. Or, you know, our guys went down, got the ball to trade and he got an and one. And we're up three. And now, you know, we get a stop and now we're up five. The biggest, to me, the biggest play in the game, and again, I look at it probably a little different than most people, <laughs> sure, you know, we made shots. Sure, you know, Goki hit some great threes. Uh, Lantman, you know, did what he did. DQ, you know. And you can look at everybody that played and say, boy, he did it. You know, this play, Chris Conway with a couple putbacks when they doubled Trey or went after the block. And Chris was where he was supposed to be. He wasn't watching Trey saying, okay, I know Trey's going to score. Just watch. You know, he got to the front of the rim and, and, and put Trey's misses back in twice in the last five minutes of the game. And so everybody did what they were supposed to do. Uh, but the biggest play of that game that nobody's even talking about is we had a two-point lead. I think actually we didn't get the end one. When he made the three to tie it, we went down to Trace Court and we went up two. And they came down with about 45 seconds to go. And, again, their great player uh, threw a ball and, and Trey, you know, was in the passing lane, opened, didn't ball watch, and intercepted the pass. And that defensive play – won the game now we're up two with the ball with you know 35 or whatever seconds we get fouled and make our free throws and so often this year we won those close games at the defensive end but because of the free throw shooting or because you know you think of milwaukee with gold gear you think of of, of lampman when he made some huge plays down the stretch you think of those plays but it's what we did at the defensive end getting the stops and not only just getting the stops getting the rebounds and, and that's a huge difference from this team this year to last year is that when we got the stops, we could also get the rebounds. And and that's the difference between, you know, it's so hard to win a regular season championship at the mid-major level and come back and win the league tournament. And if you don't believe me, just go look at uh, over 50% of the 31 conferences, over 50% of the regular season champions were beat in their conference tournament. Think about that. The regular season champion, I think it was 18 or 19. Of, was it 21? 21. 21 of the 30. We got a huge research group here tonight. Yeah. I'm glad because I, I didn't want to spend I didn't want to spend time looking that up before the show because I was spending all my time uh, being a ticket manager, um, <laughs> sending T-shirts to people. I, I don't know what they think. You know, I, we got to have a T-shirt. We got to wear that in our bar when we watch the game. And Oh, so you want me to leave the team right now, go up, find you. What size do you wear? <laughs> And uh, so that's what my last few days have all been about. You know, how many tickets can I get you? Uh, how many shirts can you want? Do you get? Can you help me get uh, an airline flight? You know, things like that. I told both. I, I, 
two of my three sons are going to fly in for the game, and I told them, just I'll Venmo, Venmo you what it costs, but you do all the work, okay? I'm not going to get your flights. No, it is. It is media interviews and all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll talk about all that, too, uh, as, as the show rolls on. Remember, the Greg Camp Show is brought to you by Henry Ford Sports Medicine, the official team physicians for Oakland University and you. For more info, visit henryford.com backslash athlete. But, uh, yeah, Camp, I mean, it, it has been just, just an incredible, incredible ride, and the ride's not done yet. Obviously, on Thursday night, the Golden Grizzlies and the Kentucky Wildcats. But I also, as we wrap up that discussion about – about what happened the other night in Indianapolis. And, and you brought up Trey. And, and I just, I saw this stat on Twitter and, and it caught nationwide traction. And it camp, it really blew me away because from, from my time with the program, uh, been a part of the last three NCAA tournament berths, uh, in Division One in conference tournament championship games over the last 25 years, in Division One players that have scored 35 plus points, 10 plus rebounds, and played all 40 minutes or more in the conference tournament championship game. There are two players in the last 25 years that have done that. One is Kevin Durant. The other is Trey Townsend. That's the list. Camp, we've had NBA guys come through this program. We've had some of the greatest players in, in mid-major college basketball come through this program. That effort by Trey Townsend, when it was all on the line, when all the chips were in the middle of the table, is one of the greatest performances I've seen. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, those numbers don't lie. Uh, I will say this. I, I got a text last night about that because I tweeted that out. And I got a text la last night about that. And there actually is another person that did it. And that person played it open. It was a female. Sarah Judd. <laughs> when you said it, it popped in my head. Yeah, yeah. she. I think she had... I, I said, well, that wasn't in the last 25 years, and she got upset about that. So, yeah. then, then the whole tone yeah, changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fair. So there you go. Um, but, no, I mean, Trey, Cam, I, I don't know what to say. So I, I've, I said this to the media. I'll say it to everybody here tonight and because it's, you know, so many people. One of the things I think Oakland's, our, our media staff has done, gives, and people have done this year, is we've tried to, you know, in this day and age of, you know, free – uh, internet and whatever social media is the word I'm looking for. Everybody wants to know what's going on, right? So we've kind of opened up and showed you speeches to the team and listening to what players say and, and trying to give you a deeper dive and look into our program. Uh, one of the things that happened in that game, and, and it's this is just amazing to me because in my 40 years, I've, I've, I've heard similar things, but nothing as, as direct as this, um, you know, we were standing on the court, something, you know how the officials always have to go to the scores table and there's all, you know, they, it's those delays, which are good because you get the rest, but something was going on and we were with five minutes going to the game. And I think we were either down one or up one at the time and Golke kind of, you know, he put his hands on me and I'm like, you know, uh, if I did that to you, I, I'd get fired. Right. You know? <laughs> so, and he said, he said, and, and with unbelievable, determination and, and that this is Trey T's time. Get him the ball. Like he's telling me call plays for him, not me. And, uh, and then lamp jumped in and just was so loud. Yes. It's his time. The ball's got to go to him. The ball has to go to him. And for our players to recognize that and know what he was doing in that given night. Yeah. It was one of the most unbelievable greatest performances I've ever seen. And, uh, and our Oakland fans, you know, they got to witness it. And, and because of that, we got to cut down nets and stand under the confetti and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it was an unbelievable uh, evening. Uh, you were you were emotional at times up there on the stage and you know, ESPN times like that. What about you, Cam? Uh, what, what about you? What was going through your mind? That, that ruined my image, so I didn't like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when, you, when, when you've coached the players I've coached, and, and you as fans have got this, I mean, you go through the list in the last decade of, you know, Kendrick Nunn, Jalen Hayes, Kay Felder, Sharon Dorsey Walker, Martez Walker, Jalen Moore. Um, Jamal Kane. Who? Jamal Kane. Jamal Kane. Uh, you know, all these great players that played here that didn't get to the tournament, that didn't get to experience 
what our guys got to experience. And just this week, you know, the, uh, every, you know, everywhere they go, they're being told how great they are and everything. And, and they are, so they deserve that. that. But I, I just the emotion of knowing that this group got there and, you know, I kind of blame myself at times that those kids didn't get there. And so, um, you know, just to see that, I think emotionally, I, you know, plus I'm a little older than I used to be and valued that night much more than I valued, you know, when we went three times in six years, it was like, well, we're doing this every year, you know, and, and let's, but after you ha go through the upsets that we went through and, you know, I think you just value it more. And, and I've really enjoyed standing back and watching and, um, you know, they, they made me cut the nets down. Uh, which I had said I would never do again. I mean, there's a story to that, but when when uh, Trey and Blake came over and told me that they need me to do it, I, I did it. So, uh, you know, it was yeah, it was emotional. It was it was an unbelievable feeling. Um, I know the the ass campy portion of the show is coming up in just a little bit, but right here before we cut to break, uh, we just had a tweet came in that came in from uh, Gary McCarrick that said, "Coach, I don't have a question for you, but a statement." Coach Campy, we appreciate you, your love for everything Oakland basketball and Oakland University. We'll see you in Pittsburgh. We're all behind you, the team. There you go. That's well said. That's absolutely well said. All right. We're going to take our first break. We'll talk to our guest, the director of athletics, Steve Waterfield, coming up in just a couple of minutes. we got questions for uh, Steve coming in on Twitter as well. Everybody's going to get some questions here tonight, but we'll be back with more of the Greg Campy Show special NCAA Tournament Edition live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. <laughs> Welcome back to RJ's Pub here in Rochester Hills. It is a Greg Campy Show. My name is Neil Rule, the voice of the Golden Grizzlies. And right now, I'd like to welcome in the director of athletics, of course, it is Steve Waterfield. And remember, the Greg Campy Show brought to you by the Pino Insurance Agency, LLC, of Mimic Insurance. They cater to the educational market. If you're looking for affordable insurance and a knowledgeable insurance agency, go online to P I N O, that's Pino Insurance. Dot com today and see when the boss is here i have to make sure that i'm reading the commercials and everything. You did a good job thank you yeah, absolutely yeah. pays the bills <laughs> <laughs> absolutely you've got to keep me in check here um but steve uh, we heard coach campy touch on it a little bit what about for you as the director of athletics take me through the last 24 to 48 hours people asking you for t-shirts too uh my kids <laughs> yeah we figured that out a lot of ticket requests i'll say that yeah. which is a good thing uh, but, yeah, you, you, you find out where you're going, and then there's this great app that the NCAA gives you called Teamworks, and you just sit there waiting to download the manual. And I think Colin, Shannon, and I were sitting there probably 
at 8, 8.30, just refreshing, refreshing, refreshing to find out what was happening because you find out what hotel, you find out when your practice time is, and once you get that, it's off and running. And we just had such a great team of people. Colin's been phenomenal. It's yes. not easy. He's cut his team from the... Yeah, no, he's uh, he's fantastic, and uh, he does what great ops folks do, which is let the coach and the players focus on getting ready for the game. And uh, he's been fantastic to work with. So uh, it's almost here. I would have liked maybe a Friday game, give us another day to kind of get this thing going. But we play Thursday. Uh, it's been fun though. It's I always say it's the best busy you'll ever be. No, absolutely. And then obviously that was followed by the news that Golden Grizzlies and Kentucky Wildcats will be on CBS. Linear, the main platform, yeah, the, main the platform, big one, the biggest stage yeah. out there. And uh, you know, Steve, you and I, you know, we do a regular segment on, on the pregame show called Grizz Biz, where we talk about the business side of everything. That is good for business. Two hours on CBS, that's about as good a business as there can be. No offense to True TV, but we're not on True TV. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, CBS, I mean, that, I mean, once you get Kentucky, you're going to get everyone that fo- even folks that don't follow college basketball have heard about Kentucky and Big Blue Nation. So you're going to get that and people that are flipping through and they see us, CBS. So you couldn't ask for a better time, a better platform, and I guess as good of an opponent. We're the highest 14 seed. Right, and so uh, we got the what the lowest three seed though that they're still pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is it safe to say then, if Brown makes free throws, oh my God, yeah, thirteen. Yeah, there were some. I mean, so Kelly Ford, the Horizon League was sent because they've been advocating all season for us to be a thirteen seed, right. and we've done everything we needed to do from a scheduling standpoint. Credit to Greg for doing what some of his peers right. don't do in the Horizon League, but Greg did all that. And he said, these are the five games you need to watch. And I hadn't watched any of these teams in, oh, all year. And I'm sitting there, Dot, Kent State, Akron. Yes. Brutal. Another one. Brutal. Oh, my God. And then Brown, I'm like, my gosh, this is I – mean, we, so we were, really, we were extremely close. But if we had gotten the 13 seed, we would have played Alabama. And if you ask Greg – when he comes back up there, I don't think any of us wanted to play Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. They've seen the zone before. We went down there to Tuscaloosa and uh, NATO found uh, some ways to carve it up. Yeah. No, absolutely. But, it, you know, the moral of the story is, that, and I talked with people, we're going to play somebody tough. There is no escape at this point. Play a tough team. Yeah. I mean, Fort Wayne wasn't an eight seed. Trust Correct. me. Correct. But you're going to have to play good teams. You're going to have to play good teams. You're going to have to be good teams. And our guys are so locked in and they're such a great team. You got to do it. You got to do it and prove folks. Talking with the director of athletics, Steve Waterfield, here on the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. Uh, so, Steve, about that, is there any more light that you can kind of shed on, on, on that whole part? What's the most, um, I, I, what's, the, what's the biggest thing that you have to deal with that we probably wouldn't think? that you would have to deal with. What, what's associated with the NCAA tournament that probably flies over everybody's head, including mine, uh, right here? Yeah, I mean, it's there's always things that come up. Part of it is just getting from point A to point B, and thank goodness we're busing. Charter flights, especially, they almost warn you ahead of time. Be careful. We don't yeah. know when you're going to get a flight to get home and get to, to where you go. I think the other piece is just dealing with, and I hope we get to deal with it, and we, you win, and then the short turnaround and planning that. We've already got a tentative meeting yeah. plan for Friday. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a business trip. And we're going to put our coaches and our student athletes in the best position to win a game. And uh, um, it's a bigger stage. Yeah. But Steve, you were, you know, every step of the way to as well. And, and look, something that I don't a lot of people know, you, you know, you got to know this basketball team as well. You would go out to lunch with some of the players, you know, during the season as, as things were going along. I would imagine, because based on, because I know, because you and I have talked about it, but I would also imagine this didn't surprise you as, as it may have surprised some other people out there just based on what you knew of these guys. Yeah, I mean, so I asked Colin Chan, hey, set some times away. Let me give me a group of guys. I'm going to take them out to lunch and we'll just just talk. And so he would put it on my calendar and he'd tell me, you got four guys are going to show up at your office and you're going to take them to lunch. And I don't think there was a rhyme or reason to who he put together, but um, it was a great time just to, to be around them and to talk about things that wasn't related to necessarily basketball. We talked about a whole host of things and you knew pretty quickly it was a, a different type of team in a good way. I've been around a lot of teams in the 20 plus years doing this and you can see the ones it's just different. Right. Um, and, and this was different. And that difference made a difference. And I think you see that in the on the court, off the court. Um, 
just a great group of men and they're not young men anymore. They're men and they're just a great group. And it was fun to be around them. There's more Celtics fans than I wish we had on our team that I found out. And we'll go through that. I'm seeing Jack right there. It's sadly, he's a Celtics fan, but yeah. it, it was, uh, you just need to find out about what they're doing, what they're studying, what their aspirations are. I asked Isaiah what the best hot chicken place was in Nashville because I was going to be heading down there in a few weeks, and he let me know that. So it's – and that's a microcosm. One of the best parts about my job is I get around 300 or so student athletes, mm -hmm. and just to be able to get to know them better in the in this kind of my capacity and working with them more closely it was just a real joy this year and uh, was so happy to see them win because you just want good things to happen to a good group. Uh, guys and, and it did um and so let's see let's see what happens thursday that's pretty much jack Golke's only flaw is it yeah, I, you know what it, he's like he, he can run for office I he think, at some point could. yeah but uh yeah take the celtics thing i don't know how that happened but <laughs> we'll look past it <laughs> no but again we are talking to the director of athletics steve waterfield uh while you're here and it reminds me too we talked about the business side of the tournament for those that have asked about it uh streaming the radio broadcast works a little differently for the ncaa tournament uh, Westwood One owns all the streaming rights to NCAA basketball games. So as a part of that agreement, if you want to stream the game, you can stream the Oakland call on the Varsity app. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to get the Varsity app on your phone, and that is where you'll have to listen to the radio call uh, for Oakland and also, too, on the radio on 1270 AM and 97.1 HD3. So I'm glad you're here. That reminded me of the business. That, that's good to say. I guess that you had to pay. I think we had to pay him. 1100 bucks or yeah, something. Yeah. I think Kentucky's got 40. So, so, it's like $40,000 for yeah, Big yeah, Blue Nation. So, so, so here's, 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 here's the deal. For us. Yeah, it's even a lot. Yeah, value. Yeah, 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 and a value-based value. value. Um, yeah, I mean, just, yeah, they, Westwood One, they charge you a rights fee to do your games and things like that, and it's based on how many affiliate stations you have. Kentucky basketball is on 41 stations across the Midwest, so there's an associated fee. So, yeah, across Kentucky's athletic department, about forty grand. I think um, they can afford it. I think they can. I think they'll find a way to get it done. <laughs> For those that listen to Colin, Colin Shannon on our previous edition of the, of the pregame show talked about the fact, like, we order our gear from Nike and wait for it to come in. Kentucky gets a semi-truck from Nike that pulls up and uh, is unloaded by movers. So, mm -hmm. But I love it, though. That's the way it is. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Let's so go. throwing the ball up in the air. At, at 7, play. 10 on Thursday, they're putting the ball up in the air. Nope. And yeah. whoever's going to win is going to win. Exactly. No, I, I do – I do love it. But, Steve, uh, oh, there was a Twitter questions for you. Yeah, good. You're, you're All right. That's All right. Let's go. It's an Ask Campy uh, slash Ask Steve uh, portion uh, of the Greg Campy show. Uh, MD Fun 89. Um, this is for the athletic director, Steve Waterfield. When will we see banners in the arena again? Yeah, we did that. Did Greg send that? No. This uh, comes from Gregory K. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, what I was told is part of my arrival, they put new lights in, and with the banners, it created some issues with shadows and things in the court. I, I obviously wasn't there to see it. I, I don't feel like putting all the banners up and then finding out that that was, in fact, a problem and then taking them all down. Talk about ways to honor and recognize maybe with one banner they just add years 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 to it with the new practice facility that we're going to open up hopefully next spring uh, another ways to kind of honor recognize all the accomplishments not just of the men's team but the women's team and then of our volleyball team that also uses that as their competition right. court so uh i don't think you're going to see what it used to look like but there's ways for us to try to recognize the accomplishments of this team all the sports that use that as their competition site all right steve well, i had to put you on that's okay. good I, no, yeah yeah, yeah i've answered that one before yeah we're good that's a good question Give it up for Steve Waterfield, everybody, the director of Athletics and Times. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We'll be back with the Ask Campy portion of the show. Get your questions in on Twitter. This is the Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills.
Welcome back to the Greg Campy Show, live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hill, special NCAA tournament edition of the Greg Campy Show. We'll have the podcast up for you on the Golden Grizzlies SoundCloud and iTunes podcast pages as well, about a half hour or so after the show. So if you miss any portion of it, you can go back and uh, listen if you did miss anything. Camp, you ready for the Campy portion? Yeah, is there a Sweet 16 show next Monday? And there will be. There will be. All you got to do is get us there. That's a deal. Get us a Sweet yeah. 16, we'll do it and we'll run it back. Is that fair? Everybody on board? If we do that, will I get a sandwich with the fries too? All right. And there's a reason to do it, man. Huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, people are going to want shirts, though. More people are going to want yeah. shirts if that's okay. Uh, but, yeah, let's do it. Uh, on Twitter, Pittsburgh Park, first in, uh, as always. So, you know, it's a, a regular show. Uh, can't wait to see you guys again this week, which we happen to be going to Pittsburgh, as a matter of fact. Uh, Camp, your rugged early season out of conference schedules. What prepares you for teams like Kentucky? What are some of the additional things you or your staff or your players do to mentally and physically prepare for moments like this? Well, I, I, I don't think there's anything that's going to be bigger than what we did because of the pressure that was on it, you know. This is the reward for, you know, winning winning a conference. Like I said the other night, that's our ninth conference championship in the last 24 years. And it's, our, as you said, our fourth, uh, third time to the NSA tournament in 15 years and fourth and 20. Fourth and 20. So th- the pressure is all on that. This is, you know, now we, we've got a chance to, to shine. And, and so we're not going to do anything different. We played at Ohio State at Illinois, at Michigan State, at Dayton, at Xavier. The, if that didn't get us ready for this moment, then nothing's going to get you ready for this moment. And, and we played well in those games. We lost some close games uh, early in the year on those in in those places. But it helped us win all those close games later in the year. And then when we finally uh, climbed the mountain at Xavier, uh, they know they can win. I mean, I, I do not have to say a word to them about Thursday night. They know they can. It's just a matter of whether they can do it. You know, whether they can go in and perform and have their A performance. We're going to need, need an A game performance on Thursday night. Uh, no question. No question about that when we talk about the matchup against Kentucky. They have some stats on there that we'll discuss uh, with you, Camp. And, oh, by the way, for everyone that's in attendance here, we have we have Golden Grizzlies team posters here. Jack Goldkey and Blake Lantman are here, so feel free to come up and grab one of these if you want. I'm sure the guys will be happy to autograph them for you, so make sure you make your way up here for that. If you got a question, fire it in right now. Jake Warlock. Jake was in Indianapolis. Was really emotional too, Camp. He was he was really really fired up uh, that, that we uh, that we got that win. Uh, says with Jack Wilkie on the floor, another dimension is added to the offense. Will starting Jack be considered, giving wanting to reduce the risk of a slow start offensively, similar to the Cleveland State game? If not, what's the benefit of Jack coming off the bench compared to starting? Thanks, Coach. Okay, so the answer is no. Why would we change? Fair. And um, you know, Jack Jack started beginning of the year, went through a little bit of a struggle. Should Could I start him? Should I start him? Probably yes, but why would we? We have a, we've won 17 out of 20. We have a tremendous rotation going. He plays 35, 36 minutes a game. And the one game that I started us, him, I started the seniors against Detroit, we, we were screwed up. We, were, we didn't have our rotation. We didn't have the comfortness knowing. You know, the first media timeout hits. Jack knows he's going in. Rocket knows he's going in, and uh, Baru know they're going. And we'll, we'll have played eight guys in the first five minutes, which is, you know, what we said at the beginning of the year. We have to get deeper. We have, And the only way to do that is consistency. Consistency is the hallmark of greatness. Why would you change what you've done? We've won 17 out of 20. So that's the reason, and it's the only reason. Could I play Jack 40 minutes? Yeah, he played 40 minutes against Detroit. Do I want to do that? No. I don't think he wants to do it. I mean, he'll say he does, but physically I don't think he wants to do it. Now, he wants to play every minute he can Thursday night, and, you know, just how it goes will determine that. But he's going to play 32 to 36 minutes. Uh, MD Fun 89 uh, with the question, what's the status of Isaiah Jones and Rocket Watts for Thursday? I think Rocket Watts is 98%, and I think Isaiah is about 80%. Um, as pra- They both practiced yesterday or t- Saturday and today. Uh, in today's practice, by the end of the practice, Isaiah was limping and, and that, so – um, I think you'll see him. I think Rocket will be his normal rotations. I will start Isaiah. You know, I've never taken a guy out of the starting lineup because he was injured. As long as he's 90, 85, 90%, I'll start him. And uh, if I see any uh, holding the leg, sliding the leg, anything like that, obviously we won't play him. Why would, you know, uh, 
I want him because his skill set will be good against Kentucky. We need rebounding, and that's what he does. We need defense, and that's what he does. So his skill set will help us win the game, but not if he's at 85 or 90%. So he's going to get the opportunity, and if he can do it, he'll play his normal minutes. And if he can't, then we'll say Price will step up, Tone Hunter will step up, just like guys have stepped up all year. Uh, and obviously, too, I would imagine Rocket defensively, what he can do, that plays part in, in what things are going forward, no doubt. Uh, Matt from HRT says, uh, as Campy, obviously you're focused on your team and what you guys do, but does seeing North Carolina as a one seed playing in Charlotte bring back memories of, uh, of 2005 and that sea of water blue they had? Well, you know, 2005 was such a, I mean, <laughs> I don't think that will ever be challenged on, you know, maybe my favorite moment ever at Oakland University, just because, it, and we talked about this before, it was so unexpected and we, we weren't ready. We had no idea what the big time was, yeah. no idea what the big time was. And all of a sudden we are in the big time. And like, I think I told the story here or somewhere where, you know, we want it. We're up all night. I, 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 I'm, I'm doing radio shows in China. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. And then we, we get back, we get off the airplane and back in those days they could, you know, there wasn't the TSA and all that kind of stuff. So we get off the airplane and we come into the, you know, like the gate. And as we're walking in, there's like a barricade with like all this media and all that kind of stuff. And I, and I said, the, maybe it was Smitty. I said, what the hell happened here? They were all there for us. And, and we had no idea what this would be like. So I don't think that'll ever be challenged. And, and you know, North Carolina, that year we played them, we played Michigan State, we played Illinois, and all three of them were in the Final Four. So uh, we knew what great teams were that year, and it, it was an awesome experience. But this is different. You know, this 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 is an expected time at the tournament. This is a team that has overcome everything to win everything, and they think they can, you know, we truly think we can win on Thursday. So it's different than those guys. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Good thought. If anybody has any questions about the mindset in the matchup against Kentucky, ask Jack Golke. He'll convince you real quick, real quick. He's got short answers about it. So in 2005, we win that game, and we go and we get North Carolina. And at the shoot-around beforehand, Jim Nance and, and his, his – the guy that did the games with Jim Nance back there, Billy Packard. And, you know, they come to the shoot-around, and they're talking to me, and, and – it's the first time I ever met Jim, and I've gotten to know him, and he's, you know, he's every bit what you think. I mean, there isn't a nicer person in the world than Jim Nance. But I looked at him, and I said, he said something. He said to me, he goes, you're the winningest coach in NCAA history, in the NCAA tournament history. And I didn't I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, you're one and all. No, you're, you're, uh, you're 100%. There's no other coach in the country. It's 100%. And I looked at him and I said, okay, Jim, I'll tell you what, if I'm still 100% after the North Carolina game, I get to come sit in the tower with you. I don't know if I can do that. And I go, nope, oh, we win the game. And he goes, yeah, you, I, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, you can do that. That's how sure he was we weren't going to win. <laughs> I never heard that one. That's a, that's a great story uh, right there. Uh, Giovanni Mascheri wants to know, Camp, how does the team handle all the extra media attention? That's what they want. I mean, you dream of that, right? You dream of that. And our guys are mature. As Steve said up here, they're men. And it, it's all part of the of the whole thing. And this is what you play for. This is the attention that they're getting. And, and boy, they handle it so good. I, I had a newspaper guy come up to me and say, uh, your guys say thank you. I'm not used to that. <laughs> You know, and I just, that's who we are, you know, that's what this group of kids is. And it's, it's why everybody's so proud of them. And that, they, they're, as I heard a Trey on a, uh, uh, on an interview say, you know, there, there were no egos. There were no, everybody was humble. They talked about when Goki got here, how he came in, he wasn't entitled. And this group is just meshed because there isn't any of that. There's, there is none of that. And that's why they're good. Uh, this one, I'm going to jump to the front of the line here. This one comes from, uh, uh, Bobby Naubert, as a matter of fact, uh, hashtag Ask Campy. Hey, Camp, when Coach Bobby Naubert first came on this Coach Grant Campy show and said he was going to be paying Bobby by the win, does that win me? <laughs> by the win, does he have an amount in mind now that we're up to 23 wins from Coach Bobby? And yeah, I thought it would be about 50 cents a win. So. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll go to McDonald's after this, and I'll take care of you, buddy. 
eleven fifty, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can get maybe a half a Big Mac. Well, I gave a lady a half a Big Mac the other day, and she was okay with that. So and I'm good at that. I, I I know how to do that in that thing. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Mr. Naubert. Uh, thank you for listening to the Greg Campy Show. Uh, at Lakers24, Andrew wants to know, when and how did you meet John Calipari, and how influential, how influential has he been on your own program? Well, John, um, it, I, in the, in the industry, industry now, you know, 20, 25 years ago, was one, was a very, very full lobbyist in the industry, a guy named Wes, and he was known as World Wide Wes, and and uh, I got to know Wes because of Rao Marshall. And uh, Wes took an interest in Rao, helped Rao get to the NBA. And I don't know if Rao would have gotten there without Wes. And so I've been indebted to Wes my whole life in, in just thanking him on, on how he reached out and helped our program at a time we were brand new and nobody knew anything about us. And he, uh, he, got, he introduced me to John. And, uh, and then... You know, uh, Brandon Weems, who sent me a text today saying it's the Weems Bowl. Yes. You know, uh, Brandon was a GA for Cal and uh, and then was my assistant. And, and he played high school basketball with LeBron. And he and LeBron are, to this day, best friends. I mean, when Brandon was here, LeBron came to a game in the arena. And, right. and we played in Cleveland. LeBron was always at those games. And so through all that, I got to know Cal. Uh and, and then as I got to know him, became friends with him, Cal did this every year. He did this friends and family clinic. And what he would do is he'd bring all, you know, in, in what they called their basketball family in. And we'd spend a, a weekend in Memphis at the time um, at a casino. So we had some fun at night and that. But what we did is we were in the gym all day and we just taught basketball. And there would be 15 to 20 coaches. And I'm telling you, all the superstar coaches, Sean Miller. I mean, you just all these people that were in there, and I got to be there, and I got to suck all that up, and and that, and, and then uh, the guy that invented the dribble drive offense was at one of them, and that guy, I sat next to him at a dinner, and he convinced me that I should run the dribble drive. So I asked Cal about it, and he sent John Robick, his assistant, to Oakland back in maybe 2007 or eight, and taught me and my staff the dribble drive. And that's been our offense for the last, you know, a kind of our offense for the last 20 years. Worked out pretty well. And it's been really good, right? And, and uh, you know, Cal said last night in his press thing, he goes, they run it better than we do now. But the, the reason we do is because they don't run it anymore. <laughs> he left Memphis and went to Kentucky where he's got seven-footers galore. So, you, you know, you run the dribble drive when you only have one real post player. And uh, so, you know, it just – we, we became friends. I'm going to tell you this about John and, you know, he gets, he gets a bad rap sometimes for, you know, but all coaches get bad raps because things hold on to stuff and say things and that. But when my mom, when my mother passed away a year ago on a game day, he, he not only reached out to me on that game day, he reached out to me for about three weeks in a row on a constant basis. He's a very religious man. He goes to mass every day. And, you know, I, I did this for your mom and master dad did this. And I mean, it was a, it wasn't just, Hey, here's a text. I hope everything's okay. I mean, it was a sincere, you know, unbelievable thing. And then the, the last thing I'll say, and I, I showed this to Tony Paul last night and I, I guess he tweeted it. Um, I really haven't had time to go through all that stuff, but we played at seven o'clock on Tuesday night, right? The game ended at nine. And when I said this in the press conference, I, I picked my phone up in the locker room and we finally got to the locker room and then to the press conference. I looked down at my phone and there were 540 some text messages. And by the time the press conference was over, it was a thousand. And so when I went back and I opened up, I went all the way back to nine o'clock. So, I, you know, I didn't want to miss anybody. So I went back to nine o'clock and at 901, the first text message was John Calpar and congratulating us. And he watched the seven and a half and that. And I texted him right away. I said, you know, we'll probably end up having to play. And his answer was, I hope not. And I, I was joking. You know, I didn't realize it was going to happen. And then, so as soon as it happened last night, and I had a free minute. I called him and I texted him and then he called me and we just, we were laughing about it. But you know, he said he's going to kick our ass. So <laughs> well, just because he loves us, he doesn't mean he, doesn't, he ain't going to beat us. It's basically his message to well, just because you love him doesn't mean you're not going to beat him, right? I didn't say that. Man. <laughs> right? No, no, no. 
All right, hashtag uh, Ask Campy here on Twitter. Uh, Craig Reeler wants to know, who's a better golfer, Campy or Calipari? Oh, wait, they're not even close. He got asked that last night at his press conference, and he, he uh, him hauled it, but it's not. I'll take him on any time he wants to <laughs> especially if it's for money, because he's got a lot of money. <laughs> uh, and then we'll wrap it up with this camp. Obviously, I want to talk about the Kentucky game as well. John Henley, uh, coach with the extra layoff, from the Horizon League Championship game compared to the other conferences that played this weekend. How do you make sure rust doesn't set in? And on the flip side, how is it helping healing the bumps and bruises long season? Well, that's always a worry. Uh, but I just think because of the adrenaline of this and because this is a reward, it's not – and that you don't have the fear factor in there that you have during – I think Youngstown really had a, a bad deal. They, they were the only team that didn't play on Saturday – in the conference, that last week of conference play, we had an odd number of teams, so one team. So they played their last game on Wednesday, and because they were the two seed, they went eight days without playing. Yeah, I think that hurt. And we could say the same thing now. We'll be nine days or ten days without having played, but I just think it's different. And so in practice, you know, we're really – we're not doing much. We're, we're running. We're shooting. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't – we don't need to get better at anything right now. We just need to sustain. And uh, so I, I – there might be some nerves. There might be some, you know, miss, missed opportunities early in the game. And maybe not. I don't know. But I'm not worried about it. I really, I'm really not worried about it. Our guys are so tough. They'll, they'll find a way. All right. We will take our final break uh, after I tell you about the fact that the Greg Campy Show is brought to you in part by Farmer Own Prairie Farm, celebrating 85 years of feeding American families grass. Right. Happy, happy cows, cows. happy Real grass. Right. Yeah. No <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Greg Campy's uh, favorite read of the show. We'll take our final break. Come back. We're talking Kentucky and Oakland. This is Greg Campy's show live from RJ's Ball in Rochester Hill. Welcome back inside RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills, the final segment of the special first round edition of the NCAA Tournament Greg Campy Show. Again, live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. He's the coach, Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you all and appreciate this is incredible. This seat in your camp, the room is jam packed. People are excited, ready to go. It's been that way all year, though. It's, yes. it's been the best year, best year ever of this show, and I thank everybody. All right, Camp, let's get into it. Golden Grizzlies, Kentucky Wildcats, and uh, everybody knows the stats. Everybody knows the numbers. Everybody knows what Kentucky is about. Their college blue blood, college basketball blue blood. What's it going to take? Well, I'll say what I told our team and what I've told the media. I'll say it one more time. I don't think we could have gotten a better situation. I don't think we could have gotten a, a better seed, a better opponent, um, and, and this is why. 
we got the blue blood of blue bloods, Kentucky. Maybe 20 years ago, UCLA could argue with them that they're the greatest. But today, over you know the last 70 years or whatever, Kentucky is the blue blood, blood of college basketball. They have the largest, most vocal fan base in the in the country. I mean, there's there's nothing they call them Big Blue Nation, and there's nothing like it. All right, their radio station is you know they have a they, it goes all over the country because they've got fans everywhere. They have arguably the best coach in the country. I mean, I, I, I think he's obviously with my friendship with him and that, but he and the guy in East Lansing, I think you could argue either one. But for me, arguably the best coach in the country. And we're playing at 7 o'clock on CBS in front of the whole world. Uh, this, we're not on True TV, as Steve said. We're not, <laughs> we're not on HB whatever. We're not. We're on 7 o'clock. Primetime game. Michigan State's playing at noon. Right. right? They're the very first game. Yeah. Right. So we're playing Kentucky in the most prime time. So if we are who we think we are and we are who we want to be, we got a chance to show the world. Right? Well, we got a chance to show the world. And our players have a chance to to make a name for themselves, to, you know, let everybody know what at Oakland basketball is about. Um, and you can't ask for anything better than that. You just can't, you know, and our, our guys understand and know how they'll know how to win the game. They'll know what they have to do and they'll, they'll know that they have got to continue to do everything we've done all year uh, to compete against a level team like that. They have done it and they know they can. And it's just a matter now, of, as you would say, the horses are in the barn or the hay's and whatever you say, that stupid stuff you say. Um, the, you know, uncooked steak and all that kind of stuff. Um they know what to do, and I am, I am very at ease and at peace with it. You know, no matter what happens, I'm going to walk out of there knowing that I got the greatest group of kids. They gave Oakland University and myself one of the greatest years ever, and and I believe they're going to compete. I really do. I, I think I think they will. You know, we've got to can't have uh, Kentucky have the shooting night that uh, that Fort Wayne or or Wright State had against us or Dayton. You know. We can't have that, and Kentucky's capable of doing that. They're they've got they're the number one three point shooting team in the country, uh, number one by by a little bit too. Yeah. yeah, and they don't shoot a ton of them, which is good. And they're more Fort Wayne than they are now. If if Kentucky fans are listening to this, they're going to call me the biggest idiot in the world that I'm comparing them to Fort Wayne, who they don't even know who that is. You're right? trying to do a transitive property that the for are. our fans. If, if any blue people are listening, for our fans to understand what your team is, they are Fort Wayne on steroids, okay? They are they shoot it from the same positions. They play like Fort Wayne does. They don't score at the rim in the half court other than drives. They don't throw it into the post, you know, and beat you in there like Fort Wayne doesn't do that. It's all drive it or, or shoot to three. The big thing for them, they get they get a lot of easy baskets. You don't shoot the percentage they shoot unless you get easy baskets, but they get theirs in transition. A steal and a run out, and they out-athlete you down the floor, and you're all step and dunk, and pass it up the floor, and you're springing back, and a guy's open and shoots the three. And all of a sudden, they go bang, 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 and they're up 11, so now you've got to increase the pace, and then all of a sudden, the game's out of control. And that's how, you know, I've watched them play a lot this year, not because I thought we were going to play them, just because it's Kentucky. And I've seen them with with, you know, mood swings of, you know, they'll be up 17 or 18 and then they're down six and then they're up 12 again. You know, it's just the way they play. And so Fort Wayne in our league is similar to that. So that's why I say they're Fort Wayne on steroids. Um, for us to win the game, you know, the score's got, uh, the, my magic number 74. If they get over 74 for us to win the game, we're going to have to have one of the most unbelievable shooting nights we've ever had, which we could do. Right. And our, our team's capable of going out there and going 15 for 23 or 24 from the three. There are guys in this room that have done that this year. Yeah, right? and so and we've done it, you know. So we're capable of doing that, but we don't want to rest our chances to win on something like that. We want to rest our chances to win on controlling tempo, keep, keeping the score in the 60s, low 70s, uh, making Kentucky score against our zone, making them score against our zone, not putbacks, not we turn it over and they get run outs, you know, pick sixes and things like that. We can't have that. There's going to be a couple because they're 
Kentucky. But if the, if the tempo turns like that, and it, it, analytically, if we can keep the game into 65 possessions, we, we'll have a chance. If we can keep it to 60 possessions, we'll really have a chance. I don't know if we can do that. But if we can, we'll really have a chance. Because one of the things we do want to do our, in our zone, we'll get steals, and we can't walk it up. If we get a steal, we got to go score. And, you know, so if we score and then a game gets a little faster, that'll help them, but it won't kill us. So we do have to pick our spots to, to play fast. But for the most part, if we don't have an odd man rush or an, an advantage, we've got to get down and we've got to run our stuff. And we've got to execute our stuff the best we've ever executed it. Camp and two, just to take a look, I mean, the level of talent, they're Kentucky. Obviously, they're going to have that superhuman three, level of talent. They got three draft. They got three. Amazing. Can't, their six man could be the number one pick in draft. Yeah. yeah. That's everybody's <laughs> saying. I, I was talking to Tony Paul about it last night, and he does know, he didn't know a lot about Kentucky. And I said, yeah, uh, you know, we've Shepard could kill us. And he, a couple seconds later, comes back and goes, he doesn't even start. Right. And I go, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. The guy's a lottery pick and he's maybe the number one, no, pick. maybe the number one pick. They're, they're saying he, it's probably a lock. He'll be the, at least at a minimum, the first American player taken. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's out there. And, and so, you know, I don't know if Golki's going to be the first guy taken in the draft. So maybe they got the advantage on this. Maybe I should start Golki tomorrow night. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, Golki will hold out to when the Celtics are picking anyway. So yeah. that's, uh, that wouldn't matter. You know, so uh, he would, he would. You don't want to play for the Bucks? No. no. South Celtics, he said. Yeah, no. absolutely. <laughs> um, and, you know, the assistant general manager of the Bucks played for us. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's going to give you a chance. You might want to say yes. I love the Bucks, right? Yeah. I love the Bucks. <laughs> oh, I can't. I, I, love, I love the Bucks too. I do too. Yeah. yeah. I do too. Uh, final minute and a half or so of the show. What else you got? I, I just, and I, I tried to do this last night at the event. I probably didn't do it very well, but I just, I just want to thank the support people at Oakland university. What a job they've done this year. Giz's team and Steve's team and SWAT and, I mean, the, the people in the, in the rooms that, you know, the, the donor rooms and things like that, they work their butts off. And it's kind of cool when you have success like this. You know, everybody's excited and it makes it better. But in the last 12 years, they've been doing it. You know, I mean, they've been doing it forever. And they do it as good as you can do it. And just publicly, I'd like to thank all them. And Colin, I know uh, Steve said something, but Colin's, Colin's uh, what a job he's done for us this year. And you better not screw this weekend up. No, there you go, everybody. All right. Big thank you to Greg Hessen back in the studio, Jimmy Kennedy as well. That'll do it for the Greg Campy Show. We'll see you all in Pittsburgh on CBS 7 o'clock on Thursday night. For Coach Greg Campy, my name's Neil Rule. Thanks for listening, everybody. Well, see you later.